What an absolute honor. Look, it's the World Cup daily. This it's not we're, it's not it, it, we couldn't go the whole month covering nah. the World Cup without our next guest. Bro, we called we called Daddy Lebetard and we said, <laughs> "Papa, <laughs> We want we want soccer superstars. And he said, who's the top of your list? You want me to call Ronaldo or Messi? I said, no, no, no. They're second and third. We want Rebecca Lowe, everybody. Bex, what's up? Oh, you guys. Oh, my goodness. How lovely is it to chat again after Philadelphia, which seems forever ago. But how much fun did it you have? So much fun. It really was. Thank you so much uh, for joining. This is uh, a long overdue. I thought you would be a guest on the show Way before we worked together on NBC's Premier League coverage, well, no, I did not expect say that. No, we're peers. <laughs> <laughs> we're co-workers. We're now colleagues. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, nowhere near as beloved, but still <laughs> colleagues. We're very much the janitors yes, at this organization. I, I, I want to start there because we will. We'll talk about the World Cup. We'll talk about the, uh, especially these upcoming matches in the, on the knockout rounds, but. I want to just reflect a little yeah. bit on uh, the, the uh, Premier League Fan Fest in Philadelphia. It was the first time we worked together, and this was. Can a, I can a, I can I ask a, a question first before you say anything? What had you heard about us before we got there? <laughs> I'm really interested to know. Okay. <laughs> I had heard no, no, all good stuff, guys. I'd heard that you guys were like two Americans who were funny who knew about football. And I was like, well, that sounds like the perfect cocktail. Bring them down. Okay. And I've got to be honest, guys, afterwards as well, you came up in a number of post fan fest review meetings and everyone was freaking loving the Buddy, look at this huh we passed uh, yeah. the review we're getting a raise baby. <laughs> this, is, this is the best performance yeah. review i've ever been a part of well now let me tell you what we heard about you rebecca no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously a but i, I want to address that alexis mentioned uh and and we saw that firsthand how uh, uh beloved you uh, are to uh, american soccer and football fans uh, what your your not necessarily I don't know if it's rise to fame I don't know how you sort of view yourself when you look in the mirror uh, is it like uh, do you appreciate this this uh, adoration is it something that's a little jarring at times it's 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 a bit weird it's a bit weird <laughs> I find it a bit strange because I would say that like the first five years six years maybe of doing the show out and about the recognition like wasn't some wasn't really there that much so then when we would do a fan fest it was really stark the difference because i mean i'm just like i go out and about like i look like now like i don't look anything like i do on tv there's no makeup there's no real hair situation there's certainly no nice clothes so there was but now something has happened the last i would say three years of i i i mean i it sounds so kind of annoying but like i people come up to me a lot more now than ever before. So the fan fest then becomes slightly less jarring, but I still, every time guys, I take like a second when I'm on that stage or a few seconds, I turn around and I just like uh, soak it all in and everyone is just so lovely. And it's just, it's it's a little strange. I think it must, you know, it's it's a, it's yeah. a bit strange well, because- people, pe People it's are not, not just, they're, just they're not handing uh, us their babies. No, my yeah. sister wouldn't even let me hold my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you have a crowd of people begging you to hold their baby. They're like, please, Rebecca, take this. Oh, you, you're you're, <laughs> Honestly, you're basically yeah. soccer's Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> All we had to do, our job was made so oh. easy. If ever one of our jokes didn't work while we were trying to MC in the crowd, all we had to go is, how about Rebecca Lowe, everybody? And everyone would just start clapping. <laughs> man, if I could, if I was doing a stand-up show and I and that was my go-to if a joke didn't work, oh. man, I would, I would be. Yeah, the actually, Rebecca, I, 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 when I film my special, I want you sitting on the stage, and if a joke doesn't work, I go, "Hey, everybody, Rebecca's here." The curtain moves slightly. You're there. We go back to the jokes. You okay. know? <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. That's so. They're so lovely, but that's what the fan fest is about. Yet yeah, everyone is so. That's I love this country as well, by the way, guys, because America is so supportive of people generally. I just feel like there is no, sometimes I would say that in England, there can be a bit of an edge if someone is successful or someone's done really well or someone is like new on the block. It's, it's like, yeah, we're going to kind of build you up and then we're going to really <laughs> knock you down, usually in the tabloids. But here in America, I feel like the general culture is that 
people are happy for people to do well and if they and they, there's just it's just lovely there's such a lovely feel at those fan fests and that's just an example for me a reflection of the rest of this country this that's, is good. that's how i know you live in california and not new york because hey we ain't got that energy out here <laughs> <laughs> we're very what you think you're better than me <laughs> I, 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 I said that to robert de niro yeah yeah, so. yeah. hey yo bobby <laughs> Yo, Bobby, when you when you're done at when you're done at the buffet with the king crab legs, you know? can the rest of us eat? Hey. Uh, I don't know why Robert De Niro's at a buffet. He was like, oh. listen, Bobby, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, you know, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I saw the Irishman. Yeah, you know, I'm not a big fan. All right, I, I want to I want to ask you about this because uh, a lot of people don't know uh, your background, uh, and I looked this information up. Apparently, when you were a kid, uh, you had a pet giraffe. <laughs> Oh no! I'm sorry. It says you walk to school with what Peter Crouch. You? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's an honest mistake. No, the, it was, it was, I just the way I pictured it, I said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, you're spot on. It was exactly like that because he was about two feet taller than the rest of us, even at the age of 14. And he used to carry this tennis racket over his shoulder every day. Peter Crouch was really good at tennis. He was, I mean, not as good at tennis as he was at football but he wasn't far off he was really excellent one of those people that's like annoyingly good at every sport you know one of them and he was always so so none of us really knew he could play football he would just have this tennis racket and he used to walk to school with three other kids and um we wouldn't go to the same school so him and his three boy pals were on one side of the road and me and my girls were on the other side every morning we'd parallel walk right we'd all stop at the sweet shop for sweets and like make eye contact but like nobody would talk and then we would all carry on our journeys and then the same on the way home and we sent valentine's day cards across to like the different and not to peter i wasn't a, his ah. friends though oh oh the twin the twins very <laughs> nice they were popular back in the in the 90s but yeah he's a great and then, then i re reunited with him years later for an interview and i was like Hi, I walked in and he was at Southampton then. It was it was like early 2000s. And he looked at me, he was like, hi. <laughs> it was just that kind of recognition of like, yeah, six years ago. Yeah, yeah. six years ago. Okay, good to see yeah, you, you got, again. Yeah, you got tennis uh, rackets. <laughs> 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 Uh, exactly but he's such a nice guy he's got a great sense of humor one of he's my favorite he's so funny he's wow. got a great person i hope to interview him one day on the show yeah. he's so good great dude okay let's uh let's him. let's yeah. look back a little bit on obviously uh you, you, uh england uh, had their match uh, and uh against uh wales uh obviously qualified for the knockout stages the u.s uh against iran uh, so, you know, it, it's I've been listening to uh, After the Whistle. Everybody check out After the Whistle. Absolutely yeah. incredible podcast. If you don't know, oh, wow. it's uh, Rebecca Lowe and Brendan Hunt. Yes. Also yeah. known as Coach Beard from the Ted Lasso okay. show. Okay. Also a massive Arsenal right. fan. Beard and Bex. All right. So yeah. uh, let's start mm -hmm. Let's start with England. You and, uh, you know, th th there seem to be yeah. more... Um, I, I don't know. I guess the, the nerves uh, uh, of, of... Especially playing against the U.S. And obviously... I don't know if it's necessarily the expectation of success, but you you guys see the the squad you have. You guys want. Uh, you feel like I feel like the the English feel like they deserve something positive, especially from these group stages. But the U.S. made it a little bit scary, and then the, uh, the leading into the match against Wales, it was like, all right, well, Wales is this is a derby, uh, uh, you know, for them. So why why have your emotions been like throughout these, especially last two matches? Okay, so coming off the Iran game, obviously yeah, life was great. And then heading into USA, I really thought we'd do better performance-wise. The result, obviously now you can look back and the result is fine. The draw was fine. But the performance against USA, USA were better than us. And that was a bit of a reality check. But sometimes you need reality checks. I remember in the summer of, what was it, 21, with the Euro, Euro 2020, they got moved to 21. England played Scotland and the build-up was similar in that in that it was just, it was, there was a, there was an affinity between the two countries, like there is England, USA, and a point to be proved. And I think we drew, didn't we, against yeah, Scotland? Yeah, yeah. I feel like it was a terrible performance, or did we even, yeah, and, and, but, you know, no one really remembers it. I can barely remember it because we went on to the final. So I'm hoping that's a similar thing. But after the USA game, I was not particularly impressed, not happy. And I think I've said it on After the Whistle podcast, you know, I do love Gareth Southgate. He used to play for my team, Crystal Palace, and, I love him as a man in terms of the way he holds himself and leads this team and leads this country. But I, I just wish he could be braver because, and this is the, this is really in a nutshell what is wrong with England is that we have a young, vibrant, brave, front foot, high energy group of players better than we've had for 15 years. But we have a manager 
who's kind of like a dad, who's like, well, you can go out, but just make sure you come back early. You know, it's that kind of thing. And I just want him to let them off their leash and let them go out into the nightclubs and party because I think they're good enough. So into the Wales game, um, that was fine. That was good, a good performance, decent performance, lots of changes, get some goals into other people. Marcus Rashford is turning into a bit of a star in this tournament. I could not be happier. And so now I'm kind of like, right, we did our job. We did our job. Have we blown anyone away? No. Have we had good moments? Yes. Now it's time to really yeah, get Do to you work. still get, you've been in this country for a while now. Do you, are you over the sort of that media landscape that puts so much pressure on the English national team? Or do you still carry that in you where you're like, we're going to lose, but if we lose, we're the greatest team. That's not fair. <laughs> it's like this dichotomy that every English fan has with the three lions. You're absolutely right. My husband is a former manager in England, so he was on the other side of the press. And obviously I am the press. And so the number of uh, high voltage conversations we've had about the treatment of the England squad by the English press, me and my husband, quite a lot, because he feels that the English press are just not enough behind them. Um, and in the past, that maybe has been true. But yeah, it's this weird existence as an England fan, unfortunately, which is it's all we've got, guys. You've got the Olympics at uh, America team at, at, at Team USA at the Olympics. You've got the NBA. You've got NFL. You've got so many other things that you can spread your sort of attention on. We ain't got really anything. We've just got football. Like, bleed football. That's all we do. And so you have this relationship with the England team where you're so deeply in love with them. Like, I love England so much. And then when they let you down, you're like, I hate you so much. It is so difficult to find a middle ground. They're just eight ones. It's, it's black and so white. I can, what you say about the English national team is how my mother must have felt about me when I was a teenager. Like, I love this guy, but he just cannot <laughs> stop disappointing me. And, and look, you know, whenever we have uh, English people on the show, they, they, there's a... Um, a complex, I feel. I just something happens where I'm like, I, 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 I feel. I just remember uh, all the comment sections whenever we. Uh, it's football, mate. It's football, mate, and blah blah blah. <laughs> there's such a there's uh, a there's a condescension that comes annoying. from uh, English fans, and 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 it's not fair to judge all English Aww. based on the comment sections of YouTube videos, <laughs> but. It, there's something no, where... No, please don't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but some, We've been there enough times where we realize, oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's eight very loud people <laughs> on our comments. It's not the whole country. <laughs> but there yes, is that... Exactly. I feel like yeah. England tends to be a barometer for other uh, f other nations, other footballing nations, where they want to... They, they, they judge themselves based on how they do it's against England. It's the New England. York of football. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you're, you're right, both internationally and domestically. You know, people, players want to go to the Premier League. You know, Mbappe is an example where is he going to... That's a destination where he could go because it'll be one of the few places where he can know that he's playing at the top of his game, which is why it's such a shame that Messi never went to England because actually, has he ever really been tested I'm not 100% sure okay, he has. Wow. He has to the League, in my, well, in my opinion, in my opinion, PSG, do me a favor. And La Liga, when there's two teams, it might as well be Scotland. Wow. Sorry, but I feel like he should have tested himself. Ronaldo did. He wasn't scared. I love Messi. Side note. Didn't side note, work out well Messi, for him. But man. he wasn't scared. He should have come to England. But, um, but then, and then national team wise, England just has this self kind of self created aura around it because like I go back to what I said before it's all that the country's <laughs> got and so it becomes like we lift them up and, we, and and it has a good pedigree good history tons of great stories of the England national team so yeah I kind of see what you mean by that but I'll tell you one thing it is one day it's going to happen and when it happens for England, whether it's this World Cup or when I'm dead, it is going to happen. And I tell you, if I'm not right in the middle of that <laughs> drunken crowd in Trafalgar Square, then I have made a massive error. Well, yeah. it's going to be the probably up there. You know what? Day that day, life. I want to see you riding on Peter Crouch's shoulders <laughs> the whole crowd. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Waving a yeah. tennis racket everywhere. Why is At the sweet shop. Why is Rebecca on stilts? Yeah. This is crazy. Why is Rebecca taller than Big Ben? <laughs> 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 you know it will be carnage it would. It would i hope carnage. to be there just to see you. it look uh but no obviously this world cup the united states is gonna obviously win uh and That's you, obvious. you're gonna I mean, have to obviously show 
support and celebrate. <laughs> I know you're going to be, you know, grinding your teeth through that commentary. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, this is let's talk about the U.S. a little bit, because, uh, you know, the, it, I, yeah, I loved how yeah. you were uh, speaking about the, the yeah, Rebecca sounded like she was one of these four nil uh, predictors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, England going to beat USA 4 0. I heard that a lot. But I think the U.S. showed really well. I did not say that. <laughs> okay, well, t tell Wayne Rooney. Yeah, to, yeah. You Wayne know, Rooney that, needs that to go viral. <laughs> he works here now, dude. Wayne, relax. But I think the U.S. showed really well. Just from your perspective, now that you're here, your kids are going to have American accents. What, what, uh, what do you think about uh, the way that U.S. has developed over the years that you've been here as a footballing nation? We've gotten way further along. I mean, loads further along and not just on the international scene. I mean, because you had that dip when you didn't qualify, of course, in 2018. But when you look at the team now, I know Christian Pulisic is the gem and he really is so important and he is without a doubt the star. But there's actually been other stars too. And I'm not sure that anyone expected Tyler Adams to be quite the star he's been. I'm not sure anyone expected Tim Ream to be playing out of his skin like he's been playing because he's been playing well for Fulham, but he looks like friggin'... He looks like John Terry at his peak. He's yeah. just playing so well. Um, so that's been great to see that progression. Um, but in terms of the nation, just little things. Like, I don't think in 2014, and I might be wrong, but I don't think in 2014, uh, when I'd been here a year, I would go into Target and see a whole section of US men's national team merchandise to buy. Now, there's this huge section in my local Target. Obviously, I just walk yeah. straight by that <laughs> stuff. But it's uh, it's right there. It's right there. And um and also just generally it's on it's on the tips of people's tongues more. So at school pickup, which is you know the most cross sort of section society moment of my day, the other day after you'd um played Iran and got through, people were talking about it. And people that I didn't think would have been watched it were watching it. And it's just much more of a conversation now. You guys and this country in 2022 is a is Wow, it's so much different from where I came in 2013. And it's only going one way, guys. And I, there, everyone's got to be running scared. The NHL have already been scared off. NBA, running scared. MLB, terrified. NFL, maybe in the world we're dead. <laughs> but the Premier League and football is coming because there is no getting away from the fact it's the greatest game in the world and it's the most popular game in the world. They can't all be wrong, can I they, agree. guys? Well I put. agree. Okay. This is beautiful. <laughs> I feel like we should stop here, put our hands together, and go America, <laughs> <laughs> and go to Qatar and tell, <laughs> tell Berhalter say. what was just said on the show. <laughs> I mean, look. I just I, th this confidence has, has made me, you know, want to go up to English people and say, "Find a new sport. Yeah, You're yeah, done. Yeah. You know, pick up baseball, <laughs> baby. <laughs> we'll toss you one of ours. <laughs> uh, you get to keep the ball. I know, you've got the enough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I this is why people love you, Rebecca. I mean, you just have. A, a way of inspiring. Oh. You would make me feel like I have abs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the feat. That's quite oh the feat, God. okay? Um, I, I want to ask a question. This is, uh, we have a question from uh, Gully Squad, which are our, our supporters uh, group, the Cooligan supporters group. Uh, this is from Nick Sint. He says, uh, it's more of a statement, but he says, from the first time uh, she heard Rebecca's voice on TV, my wife has wanted to invite Rebecca uh, and her family is welcome to over for Thanksgiving in a place uh, of our actual extended family just to hear her talk. They love your voice. <laughs> you are. It is like a, 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 oh a, just a, a, a warm welcome. There's something. No one's invited us to their Thanksgiving <laughs> and these are our fans. <laughs> But guys, I think this is what it is. I think that the English accent over here is still like a kind of novelty. And then and then my voice is like the soundtrack to people waking up from a hangover on a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning. They put their TV on and it's like, there's the voice. And they, whether they like it or not, it's the voice, right? Every Saturday and Sunday morning. And I think I've just become kind of synonymous with like safety in my bed <laughs> with my cup of coffee after my 100%. big night out on a Friday. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay to be that I've, I've always said that for me, <laughs> if there isn't ketchup on my bacon, egg, and cheese, it doesn't feel like a, my morning breakfast. But now... You've replaced the ketchup. Now you if there's no the Rebecca ketchup Lowe on the bacon oh, wow. with my bacon, egg, and cheese, I'm like, bro, what's happening, bro? What happened? Bro, I'm bigger. I'm bigger than ketchup. Bro, you're bigger that than ketchup. Massive. Bro, that's Get it. That's a, put it on a bumper sticker. That is a cool. Put, it's on your resume now. Who was it? The Beatles said we're bigger than Jesus? Rebecca's bigger than ketchup. Okay. And more people... 
Have ketchup, then follow Jesus. So yeah, I'm just saying it. <laughs> it's a very influential topic. <laughs> okay. It's a religion I can get behind. Okay. Oh, my God. So, um, the, oh, I, so I wanted to talk about this, um, and, and uh, we'll wrap up in a moment. But your, uh, we're talking about family. Uh, your, you've been, uh, you know, uh, highlighted and featured about, you know, just your, your, your work ethic. And your dedication to your family. And being a woman in the industry. Yeah. And, and one thing, and maybe this is uh, an opportunity just to get maybe some advice as somebody, somebody who works in the sport and, is, uh, and ha has a family. My wife is due March 31st. We're having our first child. I'm very, very excited. But, oh, uh, you know, the question so that a, a lot of like some people from like Entertainment Tonight, Rebecca... How do you handle it all? How do you do both? <laughs> yeah, Rebecca, teach Christian how to be a woman with a child in this business. Please, I can use yeah. some direction. I love it. I love it. Okay, so my first piece of advice, Christian, is between now and March, okay. live your best life, my friend, because it is all going to change, right? So I now sometimes have just very tiny moments, usually the bedtime routine, where I sit there and I go, wow, do you remember those days, honey? And I say to my husband, like, do you remember those days, like 2012? They were great, right? They were great when like there was no bedtime routine there was no like mom mom <laughs> no it is amazing um all i would I, I have the advice how do you do it is um a lot of things has to basically fall by the wayside i'm afraid like everything becomes your kid your spouse and your job but the one thing i think is really important is is to keep going is best not not everyone can do this guys because different circumstances but if you can continue working in the way that you've always done even though they're babies they, they will start to kind of understand priorities and they'll start to understand um in, what's important in life and i do think that working really hard and don't get me wrong leaving my kid i have a little boy he's six and a half um we're at a good stage now with me leaving he gets it a bit more but we've had some as a baby he hadn't got a clue if i was there or not let's be honest but then we had that between sort of three and five and it was really really difficult when i would go to work and i've had many times when i've sat on the airplane thinking should I just give it up? Should I just give it up and stay home? Because people were telling me, you know, you'll never get this time back. You'll never get this time back. And of course you have moments when you're like, am I doing this all wrong? Maybe I should just be at home, just like ha just with him all, all day, every day. But now he understands. And he actually, he actually says to me about, he, he he's talked to me about me, my job. And he says to me, mom, do you enjoy your job? And I say, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's really important to, to enjoy your job because Ultimately, kids just, I'm rambling, but ultimately kids just want you to be happy. And so if they see that you're happy and you enjoy your job, then they're okay with it. And then it sets them a really good example. And I really feel strongly having a boy that being a female, he sees what I do because when he grows up, if he goes and gets married, he will hopefully go for a lady who is independent, who, who has a career and then continues to set that example because when I was growing up there wasn't always that example to follow and I just think that's really important so I sort of love my job but I also do it to try and do good for other people as well yeah if you 100% get what I mean. you know that's beautiful, beautiful advice very very that's like the best advice you've received because <laughs> a lot of people are like yo dude don't do it bro <laughs> <laughs> Guys, bigger than ketchup. Okay. What can I tell you? I'm gonna bigger take my advice uh, from you. No, right? thank you so much. Yeah, it, it is a, uh, 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 um, uh, you know, you don't know. I don't know what I don't know. That's the main thing. And and there it. No, but Christian, one of the things, one of the things. Sorry to interrupt you. One of the things that you still that you yet to know, but you'll know in six months' time is there is this there is this like love inside of you that's yet to come out. And when you have that kid. I'm a little bit obsessed with my kid. Like I sometimes just stare at his face. Like I made you. Like we made. Like we, I baked you in my stomach. This is so weird. How obsessed am I with you? Very. And sometimes I just say to him, "So sorry." He's like, "Why are you staring at me, Mum?" Like I'm just. Obsessed. It's actually. That's it's amazing and it's a beautiful. That's thing. actually scientific. Did you know that your brain releases a chemical so you don't eat your kid? Did you know that? <laughs> I love. Stop it! I swear. Of course. <laughs> I swear to God. Of course, Alexis would have the knowledge about eating your child. <laughs> it's 100% true. Bro, I don't know what your diet is like, but it's 100% true. Look this up. Alexis is like, "Hey, Look I had I had to cut out some oh things out of my God, diet. It was getting bad." Yeah, yeah, I'm cutting down on sodium and I'm not going to eat my kids. I've decided. You know, that's it. I was going to do keto, but I decided no. I'm not. It's true. Look it up. <laughs> 
<laughs> your brain releases the chemicals so you don't chomp on your kid when you're hungry 2,000 years ago. And now you, you stare at your kid at night. You, you know go. what? <laughs> I, I, don't, maybe, I don't know if Rebecca came on this show expecting, expect? ex, expecting to be uh, this kind of knowledge. Rebecca, but. how about you give me advice? My wife and I, we don't want kids. And we go out and we eat all the time. <laughs> also fine. <laughs> also fine. Yeah. Just live we your best life, mate, because <laughs> that is also fine. Yes. yes. Do it. And don't and anyone, you know the most annoying people in the world, I'm sure you've had about seven thousand of them in the last year, are the people who goes, When are you guys having kids? Oh. Leave me alone. We are really happy the way we are. We have a great life. You know, people need to just concentrate on their own wombs and their own, you know, what. Because <laughs> you're doing fine. So don't worry about that. You just go and enjoy your life because by the way. Having kids is beautiful, and also not having kids, you can have just as fulfilled right. a life. I agree. So, I love and it. Rebecca, people have stopped asking. We've been married 15 years. Uh, my mom, I think my mom just oh, thinks okay. I, like Christian Pulisic, don't have pieces that work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Christian. Rebecca Lowe, we can quote her. She said, stay out my damn, stay out, stay out my damn business. Yo, okay. get out my womb, bro. <laughs> okay. uh, Rebecca, this has been uh, an absolute joy. This is so cool. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us. And, and, and uh, Where can everyone uh, get, get the uh, podcast? Yeah, yeah, Mitch, uh, after Whistle. Oh, yes. Um, it's my first ever podcast, guys. It's so fun. It's called After the Whistle, as you say, and it's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify as well. It's Brendan Hunt, Coach Beard, and me. So, yeah, whenever you, wherever you get your pods, pretty much, I think. And the cool thing also, it's uh, it's, it's uh, produced by Metal Lock Media. Uh, uh, it's the f we produce it, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm me and you. Okay, well, yeah. uh, uh, Rebecca, <laughs> we're your employers, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> but this, uh, uh, Rebecca, this has been super, super cool. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an honor. Anytime. You guys are the best. I hope to see you very soon. All right.